Welcome to the lectures of company law. Today we are going to understand the second doctrine that is the doctrine of lifting of corporate wealth. This doctrine is connected to the doctrine of separate legal entity. If you haven't seen that lecture, please do that. As per our doctrine of separate entity, the shareholders and the company are two different person. But because of this doctrine, some people are using for their own use for doing some fraudulent activity. So the court come up with this doctrine. That is the doctrine of uplifting corporate will. As you know, the separate entity is a statutory privilege and it must be used for that purpose only, the legitimate purpose and not some illegal purpose. If the court find out that you are doing something fraudulent and you are using this principle for any illegal purpose, we are saying that any purpose, then court will overturn this principle and really see who is the person liable for that. So court is actually lifting this principle of separate entity. The court will break through the corporate shell and see what is happening and who is the person who is the person that is responsible for the act and that is called the uplifting of corporate wealth. The court will look behind the corporate entity and find the person who is actually responsible and make them liable for the act they have been done. Whenever in any court proceedings and in case of fraudulent activities, evasion of tax, the court can use this doctrine and uplift the corporate shelter and find out the person liable for such activities. In the case of Premlata Bhatia versus Union of India, the judgment came out that the shareholders cannot ask for the same doctrine for their own purpose. So it should be for the legitimate business purpose only, not for our personal use. We cannot ask from the court to uplift the corporate will. Well, in this case, she was allotted an individual license for the shop. Afterwards, she transferred her business to a company without any proper permission. So afterwards, she cannot argue that I and the company are both the same person. No, we cannot use, the shareholders cannot use for their own purpose. Now we have here, these are the statutory regulations and these regulations are provided for the punishment for different uh, act that is not legal. For example, section 7 sub clause 7 is for the incorporating a company by providing a false information. So we need to consider all of the facts. In case you are applying for the removal of the name of the company by any fraudulent act, then also the section 251 sub clause 1 apply for the punishment. And section 339 also deal with the liability for any fraudulent conduct of business during in case of winding up of the company. Now we have a different list of situation in which the court can use this doctrine. So let's understand one by one where corporate will have been used for fraud or improper conduct where a corporate ficket is really relying on agency instrument only and when the contract conflict or the conduct conflict with the public policy. Whenever in any contract or in any relations 
of the company if any person who is a resident of our enemy country then in that case the doctrine will be in use on behalf of a company after some court proceeding or in any court proceedings if the court find out that your whole purpose for incorporating your company is for the tax evasion then this doctrine will be in use when it founds that the company has abused its corporate personality or avoidance of taxations or in approaching or considering problems during out of such avoidance then definitely the court going to use this doctrine of uplifting the corporate will and see who the real person behind this crime according to the provisions of the act there are some exemptions for the small scale industry but the corporate will uplifting of corporate will doctrine can be used to see whether the this company is a subsidiary of another company or not so the doctrine of separate entity and the doctrine of uplifting the corporate will is directly or indirectly interconnected we have to remember that and with that i am ending today's lecture thank you for watching and don't forget to share and subscribe